Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, three times today. Welcome back to Mission Accepted. Oh my gosh, really, you know what? The beautiful thing about this whole world of media and connection and people introducing people and just the, the plethora, the plethora of what people are doing in the world and being connected to them is finding incredibly unique people like our guest today. So look, you guys have been incredible at sharing and sending out the, the, the episodes to people. We're getting feedback from people that have never heard of us before. So thank you for that. I absolutely love that we changed the show to Mission Accepted. Because when you hear Sophia talk about her quest and how she's gone from, now she still is a doctor and has been for, honestly, if you're viewing and not listening, if you see her and you, you hear that she's been a doctor for 25 years, you're not going to think this woman's <laughs> over 25 years old. She is holding people. Um, but how she went from doctor to entrepreneur, right? Still maintaining being a doctor. Um, can't wait to hear her story today. But look, if you've never been to Mission Accepted before, this is what we do all day, every day is we inspire, um, drop little nuggets. Um, give you something to laugh and joke about because we like to have fun here um, on people that have taken the mission. If you're an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, if you're in the creative industry, if you're in media, this is what we do. We get to share our story. And so thank you so much for showing up today. If you are one of those people, then feel free to reach out. But Sophia, I want to bring you onto the show. I don't want to tell people that your story, I met this incredible woman through uh, a networking event online. Imagine that the last couple of years, right? And I was the newbie on this uh, invited event and she spoke my language and we started talking and <laughs> we've been kind of booking every two weeks. I, she's a very cool woman doing some very incredible things. Um, but here is an interesting topic that people, I think, depending on where you come from and what you think about this, I love, I love her mission. I'm going to get into it a little bit later, but um, really menstruation, right? What a private conversation for so many years. And I really love what this woman had to say about this topic in particular, because many people suffer in silence. And look, if you don't have a uterus, which is kind of her mission, if you don't have that uterus, you either probably um, may, might be married to a uterus have a uterus that lived to the same house as you, have it, you know, people in your life that have them. And you know, like, oh my God, when she menstruates, she's like doubled over, or, you know, this person hardly has anything or, and it's a, it's a kind of a, something that people haven't really even wanted to talk about. And you're probably going, Deb, why are you talking about it right now? I'm talking about it because this woman's going to tell you what her and her colleagues have done to address that, that issue, concern, um, health, you know, health issue um, in a way that she has built a business around it. So that's, this is like just quite a unique interview. So Sophia, thank you so much for coming on to the show and tell us a little bit about what you do. What, did, what, what do you mean uterus? <laughs> <laughs> I am one of the few CEOs that you're going to see with a uterus necklace and a condom bag, and I forgot to wear my beaver ring today. Um, I am a physician. My mom said, claim all your titles. So Dr. Sophia Yen went to MIT, UCSF, Children's Oakland, back to UCSF to specialize in teenagers, what we call sex, drugs, rock and roll, a little acne, and some sports medicine. And about eight years ago, I was giving a talk to a bunch of physicians because I teach other physicians how to prescribe birth control, how to take care of teenagers, how to provide the best possible care. And one of the statistics that came up, why don't women take their birth control pills? And one of the top reasons was didn't have it in their hand. And my friend and I were like, oh, we can solve this. We will just ship women birth control and keep shipping it until they tell us to stop. And then we ran ads, free birth control delivery, 60% of the women that responded in the United States did not have a prescription. And I'm like, do you not know in this country you need a prescription? And as an entrepreneur, I don't want to run ads where 60% of my ads were useless. And as a doctor, I could write prescriptions. And thus Pandia Health was born. The end-to-end -end solution for birth control. If you have a prescription, we are perfectly happy to just deliver it. We'll send one 
three, six months, a year supply at a time, depending what your doctor wrote and what your insurance will allow. Or if you have no insurance, no problem. For cash, it's roughly $15 per pack of pill, three pack minimum or $20 for one pack. And we'll send you as much as you're willing to let us charge on your credit card. <laughs> and then if you need a doctor's visit, it's just $20 once a year to use our expert birth control doctors, whom we list their first and last name, all their education and why they are so enthusiastic about helping women with women's health. You fill out a questionnaire, same 20 questions I'd ask you if you came into my office. It's been approved by the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology of California, the Medical Board of California, and the Pharmacy Board of California. These questions to dispense birth control for pharmacists. And we've added a layer of doctor on top. And then you just give us a selfie, a government ID to prove who you are. And our doctor then looks at it 24 seven at their leisure. If it looks good, then she will write the prescription, send it to our partner pharmacy, build insurance credit card, bam, to your door. Every package comes with, if you can see this picture behind me, a postcard that is our Pandia public service announcement, education about birth control. Hey, did you know it makes your acne better? Hey, you shouldn't gain weight. If you have weight, weight gain, please talk to one of our doctors. We can change up the medicine, et cetera. And then it also comes with a freebie because we're about delighting women. And so inside we have chocolate, we have skincare samples, we have lube, we have stickers, we have condoms, something different every month, or maybe the same high chew. That's our default that people love. So that way you're like, oh, thank goodness my birth control is here. And ooh, here's something delightful. Wow. That's like, you know, obviously I'm past that stage. Well, if you're listening, you would know that. And if you're viewing, you would know it too. So that's just not even go there. But um, what a whole new ball game. Honestly, I'm going to tell you, I remember in grade eight in high school, you know, they had a counselor come in and talk to the class you know, and I don't know how long they talked. It was, it was part of the sex education. Maybe it was an hour, maybe it was an hour and a half. Most of us had our head down because we were so embarrassed for ourselves, never mind the facilitator. And I'm sure we all ate lunch in silence. Like no one said a word. And not <laughs> until you started to menstruate, you didn't even really know. I mean, how many stories do you know of, you know, teenage girls going into the bathroom and then just being stuck in there? I mean, it's like, uh, what's happening or not knowing what's happening. I mean, I honestly, you know, my mom gave me a book. She's like, it's all in here. <laughs> I'm like, all right, here we go. <laughs> so obviously things have, have evolved, but, um, there's a lot of maybe myths or misdemeanors. People don't understand it. When I first heard you say that, you know, menstruation, um, is optional. The first thing that came for me is like, but isn't it natural to menstruate? Shouldn't be, cause there's a whole crew of celebrate your menstruation. Those are the people that aren't doubled over for two weeks. And, then, you know, and then there's this other side to it. Can you kind of try to put some perspective on that? Yeah. So in addition to making sure that anybody who wants birth control um, should get it wherever there's internet and a mailbox in the United States, and we're happy to maybe franchise or license out to other countries if anybody wants to get in touch. Um, my new campaign, because I'm an adolescent medicine specialist, and I have two teenage daughters, and I'm one of the people who just hate the monthly blood and how it gets all over the sheets. And the example I give is pre-med, MIT, biochem final, all of a sudden blood. And I'm like, ah, do I run to the bathroom or do I finish the exam? And as a pre-med, the answer is you finish the exam. But I look to my left, I look to my right, two people without uteri, do, 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 not yeah. a care in the world. And so my new campaign is hashtag periods optional. I realized this because in trying to get pregnant, I had been on the pill for so long. When you're on the pill, the patches are ring, your periods get much lighter because you don't have to build up that lining to support a baby for the next nine months. It's just a little bit of building. And then to get pregnant, it was real blood. And so I was like, oh my gosh, so much blood. I don't care, just get me pregnant. And I realized the only reason we bleed is because we didn't get pregnant that month. From age 12 and a half to 50, we are bleeding every single month when really we should only build that lining when we're trying to catch an embryo. And so as physicians, we have drilled it in your head that you must bleed every single month. And yes, if you're not on any medication and you're in a first world country and you're you know, healthy, good nutrition, good health, you should bleed every month or I got to check 
for pregnancy, thyroid, cancer, tumor, anorexia, malnutrition. However, we have the technology with the pill, the patch, the ring, the IUD, or the implant to make hashtag periods optional. And actually, um, if you go to pandiahelp.com forward slash periods optional, at the bottom is my TEDx talk. But there's also an article by Malcolm Gladwell called Dr. John Rock's Error, where he goes over Dr. Beverly Strassman's work in the Mali tribe in Africa. They have 100 periods in their lifetime. We have 350 to 400. So we have enough for three extra women worth of periods. <laughs> and the main thrust of it is that they have eight or nine children. They spend eight or nine years of their lives pregnant. We have two. They breastfeed for 12 months, another eight or nine years breastfeeding. We breastfeed for zero, three or six months. And because of the increased um, menstruation that we have, we increase our risk of endometrial, ovarian, and colorectal cancer. Because every time you build that lining, it can mutate cancer. Every time you pop out an egg, ovarian cancer is a risk. The only other way to decrease your risk of ovarian cancer is to take out your, egg, your ovaries, which we don't recommend. But if you go on the pill, the patch, the ring for five years, that decreases your risk of ovarian cancer by 50%. And so, so it's let's actually, stop there. Yeah, let's stop there a little bit because those are really incredible, profound statistics. And I think for the most part, again, depending, you know, obviously not your children because they've got, you know, someone very wealthy and knowledge living in their, you know, li living under their roof. But for the most part, people don't know that there's other risks involved or there's other solutions in being able to decrease. And you're talking about some of those right now. So not to have you repeat it again, but it's really, it's kind of a, it's new information for people. Cause usually it was like, if you, if you had really heavy periods, you could go on the pill to try to control just because, you know, it's for some people they can't go to work. Right. Yes. Um, and, and we've never really known any other benefit other than inconvenience. And, you know, I don't know, we, you know, women can tend to, you know, be okay suffering. It's kind of part of the deal. You know, we just suffer through it. But so here is a, it's a lower risk of cancer. Yes. Right. Is there yes. anything else? I've heard you kind of talk about acne. Like what are some of the other benefits that we just don't know about? So in medicine, we always like to ask medical students questions. And the number one question, one of the questions you'll get as an OB-GYN rotating through OB-GYN is, what is the number one cause of anemia in the menstruating woman? And we gave you the answer in the question, menstruation. So that is the number one cause of anemia because we're being bloodlet one week out of four. And we weren't supposed to be bloodlet. We were supposed to be pregnant or breastfeeding. And how many periods you have when you're pregnant or breastfeeding? Zero but instead we're bleeding and it's only 90 cc's every single month, but it's every single month that a person without a uterus is not being bloodlet. And actually in adolescence in the United States, it's standard that the woman's hemoglobin goes down and the man's hemoglobin goes up. And part of that is because men are running around and doing muscular stuff as animals back in the day. And we are bleeding one week out of four. So anemia. The other one is acne. So during your teenage years, or if you're a person, I was one of those people every single month would get the North Star on my forehead, my nose, my chin. And once my hormones were leveled out, instead of up and down every month, up and down, it's just smooth, no more acne. So right. that's one. And it's also been shown that people have exacerbations of their asthma, of their depression, of their diabetes, of their seizure disorder with the periods, because you've got these hormones going up and down and particularly with situations where you need hormones to be stable. So acne, asthma, diabetes, seizure disorders, all of these benefit from stable hormones. And as the parent of teen and tween, their hormones are already raging. And so if I could <laughs> fix her acne and calm down her hormones a little. It's a double benefit. But the one caveat as an adolescent medicine is if your daughter is not missing school because her periods are so horrible, um, then wait two years after she gets her period because you still grow in height for two years. And if we throw the estrogen before then, then you could lose a potential one to two inches. And so my family is short Asian stock. So I'm trying to <laughs> let my daughters grow as much as possible. But the number one cause of missed school and work under the age of 25 is painful, heavy periods. And exactly as you said, so many women have suffered in silence 
And I say silence no more, <laughs> speak out and let the world know. But also a lot of women, it runs in my family. It's natural. My aunt has it. My grandma has it. Everybody else has it. So it's just a burden I have to bear. No, we live in society with technology and it's natural for me and my family to be blind. But I wear glasses and get Lasix or other people have asthma. It's natural for them to suffocate and die, but they don't do that. They take their medicine. So same thing. If you are missing school or work, please see a doctor and know that the first line treatment is ibuprofen, um, 600 milligrams, three times a day, up to five days in a row with food um, that will decrease the blood by 30% and therefore the pain by 30%. And if that fails, then you have to look to something hormonal, the pill, the patch, the ring, the IUD or the implant. And, you know, it's very interesting. I go through the same thing when people talk about, well, you know, part of what I do in my world is, has been, well, holistic health, right? And so I talk a lot about the brain and people are like, yeah, well, you know, it's kind of, they, they, they sign themselves up for it without even realizing they're doing it. And the verbiage is, yeah, well, it's in my family or, you know, I've got dark circles and well, it's in my family or my, you know, I age or I wrinkle or I this or I that, and it's in my family. And I always say um, with modernization, <laughs> has come solution and really technology, people have no issue upgrading their phone, none. They want the next phone because it's upgraded, because it's better, they upgrade their apps, they, they want a new computer, they want this, they, you know, TVs, they go to smart TVs, they get rid of, you know, it's, it, there's a progression in technology and people forget that there's a progression. They do recognize it in medicine, in what they think of in terms of conditions, like heart conditions, or we go and do a run. So we raise money for a certain type of cancer or we this, but when it comes to what people consider the small stuff, they kind of assign themselves to, yeah, well, you know, my mom started to lose her memory. I'm like, you might want to do something about your brain, you know, and, and enlighten people on the prevention. I would say with modernization comes supplementation. And when I mean supplementation, I mean, if you're depleting, you need to fill it up. You have no problem going to yoga. Well, go do something about your menstruation. You know what I mean? So exactly. Um, so and tell me other what benefit is that the fewer times you bleed. So if we're bleeding 350 to 400, we're using 10,000 to 13,000 menstrual products in our lives. So that's one money Two, that's risk of blood everywhere on the sheets and clothes and whatnot, but three environments. And so if you can mm -hmm. cut that down to a third, how much less landfill are we contributing to the world? Or if you can advance the menstrual cup or menstrual panties, that's great as well. But, you know, different people use different menstrual products and then menstrual poverty, um, menstrual equity throughout the different countries, you know, in the United States, we're moving towards, and I don't know what it's like in Canada, but my phrase is wherever there's free toilet paper, there should be free menstrual products, but there would be a lower need for menstrual products. If we all cut our periods down to just twice in our lifetime or, you know, hundred versus 350 to 400. You know, it's, 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 it's interesting once you start having a conversation about something like this, when you really look at the impact, never mind just what it is like for us or the people that are in our lives as we do that once a, once a week or what have you, you know, there's all sorts of, you know, there's been a great movement of empowerment about, you know, menstruation and being proud and all of that. But with some of that, I think it's come that like, okay, we can handle it. And now here comes another option. So you've got, you, I mean, Awesome. You're like, you're doing your thing. You're a doctor. You're, you're, you have all this information. And so there's something pretty special about your particular organization. Maybe share with us, you know, the woman led part and, and what made you decide to throw something else on your life, being a doctor and a, you know, I know you're, you, you also play a big part in your family, taking care of like your mom. And um, also you have two children. So why Pendia Health or how did that all come about? Yes. So we are the only women founded and women led, the majority women owned, and we are also the only doctor led company in this space. And I would hope that you would want a woman leading a women's health company. I would think that you would get the best possible care from someone who's taken an oath, do no harm. I've told everyone, as long as I'm CEO, we will always tell you what's best for your health 
even if it doesn't benefit our bottom line. But to my investors, I will make money, but I don't need to make it pushing something that is not in someone's best interest because I'm hoping to develop that trust that we give you the best care. And then you tell all your friends and then we're your friend from your first period throughout your entire life because we're starting with birth control. We're adding on acne. We're adding on menopause because I'm of menopause age and all my friends like menopause. and We want the best possible treatment for menopause. And then supplements, prenatal, postnatal, et cetera, skincare. We want to be the online health brand Women Trust. And we chose Pandia, the Greek goddess of healing, light, full moon. I also made up the definitions. I think it's fate. Pan is every and Dia is day. So we're here for you every day. Set it and forget it. Let Pandia worry so you don't have to. I started this company because for myself, I was sick of running the pharmacy every single month and worrying about running out of my birth control. And the insurance companies would only give me a seven day window. And most of us are responsible. We run out on Sunday. So we go the Sunday before and they put in the computer and like, you got to come back tomorrow. Otherwise it's not covered. And you're like, I have no time. I am here now. I stood in line. You want me to come back tomorrow? And that's the way it is with insurance companies. So we made it set it and forget it. Let us worry. So you don't have to, no one runs out of birth control on our watch to the best of our ability. And then I made it for my daughters because um, there are many companies out there and I want the women and anyone who supports uh, those of us with uteri, put your money where your values are. Who is the CEO? Who is the founder? Because some of these companies have woman washed and swapped in a woman CEO, which is great, but not the same as women founded, women led, women owned, doctor led. And if they were providing care at the level I am, I am the only academic doctor CEO in this field you're going to find because who is crazy enough to leave their cush, not cush, but easier guaranteed life and go to the startup life. I did it because it needed to be done. I did it because it needed to be done right. I did it because I want to provide the apple of women's health care, not the lowest, cheapest thing. Ladies, do not skimp on your health care. Do not go for this cheapest option. We have a cheap option for birth control, but I like that. If it were me, my daughter, my friend, I wouldn't necessarily go for that one. It works for some women, but there are going to be side effects. There's a better one that's slightly more expensive but aren't you worth it? Yeah. You know, and that's the other thing too. And I love that you're addressing that because by nature, by nature, um, now I don't want to just kind of say it's our, you know, it's our sex women, but as caregivers by nature, our needs are not always at the forefront. We've had to learn as the, as a society to really replace the word selfish with self-care. And I don't care you're on a plane, they tell you to stick the oxygen mask off, you know, 90% of those women in their head, even if they believe that it's true, even if they believe, I know that my children or my family or the person sitting beside me is going to need me to be breathing to help them, our natural God-given vital organ, whatever it is, says, yeah, I don't think so. It's just this natural being. I actually was, I don't know who I was talking to. I had this great moment. I mean, God knows, maybe it was you. We've been hanging out so much. It was super super cool. Um, And that shared with me that, um, uh, so as a woman, was it, must maybe it was you. There was something about um, that when a baby's born, part of them, part of their blood goes back up into our heart or something. My God, I, I wrote down some notes. It, it just made so much sense. They're like, if you ever want to know how a woman can lift a car off a child, it's because they truly are cellularly always with you. There was something about the blood exchange that happens um, as they're being born. I think it's got to do with the placenta. I need to get that story right so I can tell it right. What but it's mean? like part. Of, <laughs> yeah, you probably are going to. Have, um, let's just let me take it from here. But. But no, that's I the- mean, we are tiger moms. We are the bear mama. We will do anything for our children. Yeah. And I think that applies, you know, both sides, but we carried it for nine months and we breastfed it. I told my children, it was so painful to create you. Please do not die. It would kill me if you died. Don't die. You are very, very, I would hate to breastfeed again. I don't want to do that <laughs> yeah, ever that's- again. And, and so absolutely, when they say put your oxygen mask first, so you can save your kid, it's logical because the kid's like, "Ah!" 
<laughs> you yeah. are the one that will save them and get them through the fire. And so you must save yourself, but you yeah. must also choose, you know, the b- best possible care for you. And yes. if the difference is between $7 a pack and 15, choose the $15 pack because that's yeah. less than 50 cents a day. You are yeah. worth at least 50 cents a day. And as I like to say, I can do everything. Somebody without a uterus can bleed it because I am awesome. And so are you. And so is everybody with a uterus. But why? We have it, the option to turn it off. Why be hit randomly one week out of four with blood? And those without uteruses don't get it. It's random. It's not every Tuesday at 10 a.m. It's crazy random. And we're always in the back of our head having this burden to carry around a tampon, a pad in case something happens. No dude has ever had to carry something. Well, you know, not yeah. as many dudes. A hundred percent of us with uteri have that. A hundred percent without uteri don't have to carry something around in case something happens. Right. And so I think it goes back to uh, taking care of yourself, being willing to invest in yourself. Obviously, this is new information. It was certainly new information, and I'm obviously past that point in my life. But it's very important information to be able to share and align with, and to. Honestly, I always say to people, the most important piece of real estate you have is you. And you may not get that in your 20s and you may not get it in your 30s, but you're sure and heck going to start to really learn about it in your 40s and onward that probably where I put my biggest dollars is in my nutraceuticals, where I put my biggest dollars is into that self-care. I don't care if I have had the same TV for 10 years. And when people are like, oh, I don't know if I can afford it. I'm like, stop going to winners and buying pillows you don't need. Like, seriously, how many pillows do you need on your couch? I think it's about... And we do, we kind of put other people first, right? By nature. And it's been a rewiring. It's been a rewiring of putting ourselves first, not feeling selfish. But the other thing you do is you actually allow the people around you to put themselves first. You allow your children to understand that health is a, is a very, very, very big commodity. It's not something that you worry about later. It's part of that whole preventative healthcare idea. But I, I have a question for you. So you created this. So you came from, you know, like you said, not necessarily cushy, but you had the mindset to go from one to another because the drive and the need was so much stronger. So from someone who didn't, you know, leave business school and go, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, right? You chose, you chose the other path of, of being a doctor. What's one of the kind of coolest surprises from be, from going down this path, just being an entrepreneur, like having to go through whether you're selling socks or you're, you know, you're doing what you're doing, like just from an entrepreneurial concept, what's kind of one of the coolest maybe people that you've met or a surprise that you weren't expecting? I would say exactly as you opened this um, episode, it's people. It's meeting all the amazing women, village allies that are here to support women founders, um, from Springboard Enterprise, Women's Startup Lab, Stanford Stardex, Electus Capital, Arlen Hamilton's Backstage Capital and her team and um, CEO, all of these women helping women and allies helping women, Astia um, and my um, colleague at Perkins and Coe, all of the people that have stood behind us and all of the investors at Backstage Crowd that has um, helped to fund us and everybody who's lent their time along the way. There are people here to help. We need more and we need more venture capital. Um, Currently, women are getting 2% of the venture capital that's out there and we deserve half the pie, at least. And so, you know what, here's the interesting thing. So as we start to make this movement, it's still surprising, you know, as a woman, I've been an entrepreneur for almost 30 years, started the first women's networking group in my home Sunday at two, because it was a time that kids weren't necessarily napping so much. Like we all brought $2, two, $2. Uh, so all the kids were fed and all the, and it was this obscure idea around being an entrepreneur. And there was people like in our world that were like, what are you guys doing? You know, I remember going to um, a formal networking group and I was told you should go run one of the com- the committees. I almost rolled over right there. So we see this evolution and we sometimes forget when you say a statistic like that, it, to me, it's still shocking yet. I've been in the progression. I'm like, hasn't the 20 years or the 30 years that we've been kind of trying to make movement. It's like, so, you know, I'm doing this crazy walk across Ireland, right? Me and my colleague, we're going to take this little walk 
like 10 marathons. And I was talking to, um, so, you know, so grateful. So Alicia Keys organization, her charity is going to be the recipient. Now her founder sent me some stats. Um, and this is cool. I'm going to meet her in New York when I go next week. So, um, so she sent me some stats and I'm like, so, you know, fill me in because I'm thinking that the arts and entertainment, this creative world, it wouldn't be so out of balance. And she said 2.6 of all of the, of all the productions that you hear, like, you know, when you, when you songwriters, what have you, 2.6 of the, of the songs that are produced are women. I'm like 2.6, 2.6. Yeah, like the women in, singers are the ones that stand out to me. Beyonce, Rihanna, Alicia Keys, and they yeah. deserve 50% of the pie. Yeah, we, yeah, absolutely. So it just still surprises me when I hear things like that, um, which is interesting because here, and it's ingrained. I mean, I'm helping my son start his first business. I automatically, maybe because from where I've came from, my first thought wasn't even, yes, we're going to raise, I'm like, okay, we need to raise capital because this bank's done, right? <laughs> this bank's done. <laughs> Bank of I've, money. I've bankrolled all my own companies, but it is not an automatic thought to go raise capital. I had to learn that because I self-funded. And honestly, life could have been very different had I had the mindset to just go, oh, I'm starting a company. Let's go get some venture capital. It, it, it's a, women tend to go, well, I don't know, almost like not do I deserve it, but yeah. it's not a, it's not a form they're used to playing in. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. That's a very cool surprise. I think that's, you know, that community, that community out there. And, and it sounds like you've tapped into some great communities. So, so here it is. So tell us a little bit, if someone wants to uh, first get more information, um, they want to just, you know, hang out and find out more they want to get your products delivered. Um, you already talked about the cost, which is extremely reasonable for people. And, you know, the whole idea around 60% of women were just not taking their birth control, therefore not bettering their health in any way. And you've kind of found a solution for that. So one, is there anything else that you want to share with us that um, about what it is that you do and um, the betterment of someone's health? And then where can people get in touch with you? Yeah. So one other thing is that I'm a woman of color. I went through medical school and I realized what they taught me at UCSF and Stanford works great for a Caucasian female that wants to bleed every single month. But as an Asian, Black, Latina, um, as an Asian, I had to go through three different birth control pills until I found one that worked for me. And even as a doctor who can take a pill every single day, I kept going back to the one that we were taught at UCSF and Stanford, because that's the one they taught us was the best one and that we should start everybody on. And I realized that only works for a Caucasian female that wants to bleed every month. Now I've spent six years of my life dedicated to just birth control pills, patch and ring. And I've created using my MIT mind, my Stanford professor hats an Excel spreadsheet ranking the birth control pills from most likely to have breakthrough bleeding to least likely to have breakthrough bleeding, most likely to have man side effects such as zits, munchies, depression, acne, that kind of stuff to least and optimized it. And so we give our patients a secret sauce algorithm based on their BMI, based on their age to protect their bones. And so again, better care by better physicians. Check when you choose telemedicine, who is the CEO, who is the founder, who is the owner, who are the doctors and how involved, just because they have an amazing chief medical officer not the same as a CEO who actually uses the product and has built the company for herself, her daughters, and anybody with a uterus. And who really did this not for the money, but we will make money for the investors, but to make women's lives better. To find us, we are on every social media outlet, TikTok, Insta, et cetera. It's Pandia Health at P-A-N-D-I-A Health, not Panda Health, Pandia Health. And um, if you go to pandiahealth.com forward slash periods optional at the bottom is my TEDx talk um, on the second Tuesday of every month at five o'clock Pacific time in Espanol, we do a Facebook live that goes to YouTube. So if you want to catch me, ask me questions, find me there at five o'clock and then at 530 in English. 
So we can practice our Spanish at five or we can do our English <laughs> at 5.30. That's uh, where you can find us. And we've created a code, mission accepted for anybody who needs our telemedicine. But if you already have prescription, you can just use our service for delivery. But if you wanna use our expert doctors for birth control and in the future, acne and menopause, um, then you can enter the code mission accepted. It'll get you $5 off the once a year fee to use our expert birth control doctors and you get unlimited follow-up questions about birth control. I mean, I have to tell you, you're so full of knowledge and you're so full of passion. It's oozing out of you. Like you can't, but help, I, I can't wait. To, I'm going to go and watch your TEDx talk. I've heard you speak many different times and every different time I hear a different piece, Aww. right? Um, really what a strong, you're, you're such a powerful advocate. Thank you so much for what you do. I have a completely different question for you. Just completely different. So, um, I have this little addiction. It's got something to do with music. Oh. And I always, I always, uh, I've been sharing transparent, you know, if I'm ever late for a meeting, you know, that I'm actually listening to a song. I'm not grabbing a cup of tea and I just can't hang up, but here's my question to you. So you're, on a desert island you're heading to that desert island that's it you and whatever you're packing in your suitcase and you've got room for one album one album that's it just one what is the album that you couldn't not listen to for the rest of your life what is your favorite album wow i know right it's gotta be either beyonce or you know who run the world or uh whitney houston because her voice is just amazing okay girl one album one <laughs> island pick one. all right pick one. i'm going with beyonce because i love the faster beat and i love the girl power and i love the message okay any particular album or just Beyonce's greatest hits. <laughs> Beyonce's greatest hits and specific this song, you know, who runs the world, girls. Who runs the world. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now you know the song for when you're walking out on that next TEDx talk, when you're going out and you're about to sit down on stage with Oprah or Brene Brown, right? So now you know your song as you walk out. Yes. You're going to yes. have to get, you know, you're going to have to probably get off, get some royalties or whatever, but I'm sure she'll back your play. <laughs> I'm sure she'll back your great. play. What a pleasure. What an absolute pleasure to learn more. And congratulations on crossing the line and going over into that world of entrepreneurship. We clearly need you. We clearly need you over here. And um, yeah, I so appreciate the work that you do. And thank you so much for coming on to Mission Accepted. And anyone that's listening to this, please share forward. This is timeless information um, and people need to hear. So please send this on. If you, if you decide that you want to come onto the show, if you fall in that category of a crazy entrepreneur, you've got a mission you're working on. If you're in the creative, if you're a singer, we were just talking about music. And if you're in the music industry, if you're a radio host, podcast host, we want to hear from you, collaborate, bring you onto the show. So you too can share with the world, your greatness. So thanks so much for being the most I mean, honestly, you guys are just the best audience ever. I mean, you know, I know there's other podcasts, but they're, you know, we've got the best one over here. So thanks for everything that you do. Thank you, Sophia. And we will see you guys next week. Thank you.